I look for tellable stories that are physically tellable, and from a plot point of view, that which is uh, at least pliable. And I mean, we still got, um, we're still connected to like, but we're connected to people who lived outside of technology, yes. and then we're connected to the information age. Because yeah. we were there from the for the beginning of it. So we know how to jump in and out still. The first iPod, iPods. Bro, them shits thick, were fucking this cup right here, thick bro. Ones, <laughs> yeah, thick ones. Yeah, yeah. I thought I had the iPod Classic. You couldn't tell me nothing. 80 yeah. gigabytes. Yeah. You couldn't tell yeah. me anything. Yeah, I still have um, the color one when it first dropped. The nano ones? Yeah, and, I, and I'm and i like, I got so much good music on it that I yeah. refuse to like. I got albums that I'm, I don't know how I'll ever get again. I got my high school mixtapes up there. Really? <laughs> you suspect? <laughs> it was more like we were... I was really heavily into 50 Cent. Like oh, heavy. shit. I was you heavy, were, you were heavy. Trying to get rich or die trying. <laughs> it was just me just, we were just battle rapping people at our high school. So, so wait, 50 Cent was bumping in the South like that? 50 Cent was, 50 Cent was everywhere, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I, remember I imagine, pe- but out had, here it was like, it was, that was 50 it Cent. Was, you know? It was crazier. I was living in Tokyo at the time, and I remember everyone having a bulletproof vest on. Yeah, the shirt, the bulletproof. Oh, vest. because his album cover. Right? My high school senior picture. I got a G Unit shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> My high school shirt had a G Unit shirt on. I like G Unit hats, everything else. That was, that was me. Fifty Cent all the way. So I remember when me and my. <laughs> I went to the Netherlands. Me and my boys, we would just drop mixtape, and we would just go at the people at our school. We was, really? <laughs> some dude got Many, stabbed man. at our school, and then right. we made a whole song about him getting stabbed. It's just stuff that are canceled. <laughs> stuff <laughs> stuff yeah. is very, like, looking back on it now, I was like, eh, this was like, yeah, who are we? Who are we? Many, so man. So now I'm just like, oh, man, we shouldn't have did that. I remember when 50 um, dropped that song where he was talking, I think it was called... It was when he was talking about robbing everybody. How to rob. How to rob. There this we go. ain't yeah. serious. That was before, way before he blew up, too. So like, so we met this dude. So we met these. So, like, when you're, like, from, like, a military background, you're meeting people from all over yeah, the, the world. Mixing it up, right? So Different bases and whatnot. Different bases, but different people from different sections of America. Yeah. So a lot of my friends were from Atlanta. So that's how we got the Atlanta Underground Rap. And these New Yorkers came. Oh, and yeah. they were giving us all this early 50 cent stuff. So the power <laughs> of the dollar, we had that song. It was like, man, LAPD, NYPD. I was yeah. like, who is this dude? And then like, oh, this is 50 cent. And he brought it in. So then when he blew up, we're like, oh, this is the dude that you brought to practice all the time. Yeah, yeah. So we're just all like heavy 50 we're cent. On thing. it, right? Yeah, heavy Dude, 50 he, cent. he took over, though. I remember that whole movement. Like, Yeah. Out here, though, like I grew up more listening to like Dipset and shit. Being Dips, from yeah. Uptown and shit. Dipset, we were heavy on Dips. Dip. Yeah, I feel like every wave... Crosses over. Yeah, I remember in football practice we would end it out to dip set, dip yeah, set, yeah. dip <laughs> set. Yeah. The fucking anthem. Two else was eighteen. Yeah, and you think about that. Look how imagine you being eighteen with like four million. Bro, I wish. I get why Lloyd Banks doesn't rap anymore. What he's done everything, and when he's nineteen years old. Yeah. What else like, does he want to do? It's you get so much given to you at that moment, and that yeah. was like when it wasn't making as much money as you can make now. Imagine that those those artists had like the capabilities to reach out as you do now. Yeah, imagine back when they were first taken off. Even though fifty is like what two hundred million dollars, like, they got money. <clears throat> yeah, but they would have had. Now it's more. I think that you're investing into the artists. Yeah, right. You're investing into the artists, as in like we love Fifty Cent, but now it's just like we get to see what type of person he is. Like, yeah. oh wow, he's a troll. Okay, yeah. whoa, yeah, he he's really, a great troll. he really is. He really is like that. Or now like. When it kind of made me, like, I used to love Jim Jones, right? Yeah. But as soon as seeing him crying on TV for his mother, I was like, I can't listen. <laughs> I was just like, it was hard, like, me getting hyped to his music, hearing him on the steps crying because his mom doesn't like his girlfriend. I'm like, what? Mommy? Oh, that's, you could... That was the reason? He was like, I remember it was like early love and hip hop. I was like, oh, Jim Jones, freak, Jim Jones got the documentary. Then he's like sitting out on the steps with his braids. And he goes, mommy, you got to be nice to my girlfriend. Stop, mommy. And I was like, all right, man, this is, I got to listen to some, I got to listen back to yeah, 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 So go they broke that, four, tapes. they broke that, like when reality TV came out, it broke that of just like understanding who these artists are. Like yeah. clearly I'm not going to run up on Jim Jones or anything else. But I remember being like in high school and just like, man, why is Jim Jones crying on TV? Because his girlfriend doesn't like his mom. He's, he's, he's everybody else though. They made, they made artists more personable. Yeah. So Which now is it's good just like, and bad because it does take away from the image, I guess. I saw DMX yell at his son. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's like freaking it was like Ayana fixed my life. I never watched that show. I was like, oh DMX is on, let me watch it. And his son is like, 
I want this, Dad. This back. He'll, you don't even know what you're talking about. I was on drugs then. What are you talking about? Get, get out of my face. Yeah. Like, X is the man, though, man. <laughs> He's in there yelling I at his the, kid. I love the Christmas anthem. Oh, uh, that Rudolph. The Rudolph the Red. That's one of the best videos ever, man, because he really kills it. <laughs> Dude, DMX, man. <laughs> Rudolph the Red. He was on crack. He said he was high on crack. Oh, the double album. It's like, what can you not do, DMX? Yo, that dude is like, he was another artist that when he blew up, it was just like. DMX, I mean, DMX was big. It was just like heavy New York rap yeah. all over the world. And then kind of like after 50 Cent, it was just like, then the South started just Rising. blowing up. Yeah. We would always rock Outkast, Outkast, Scarface, Ghetto Boys, freaking, you know, Uncle Luke and all those yeah. old boys. And like they that. became the sound. That 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 a uh, lot of New York rap sounds like that. When I first yeah. heard ASAP Rocky, I thought he's from Houston, Texas. Yeah, he did that whole um like chopped and screwed. And I was like, who's shit, this dude from right? Houston? They're like, oh, he's from Harlem. I was like, what? He's from Harlem. Yeah, which was clever to do though to mix it up. I French, like, French Montana too. He yeah. popped when he's down in Atlanta and stuff like that. Yeah, I think they were just like, I mean, I don't know. I've never been down there, but it felt like everybody was more coordinated over there. <laughs> like, because I don't know New York, like especially now, it always feels like, and I think in anything. Um, it kind of eats itself, like. What do you mean? Did like, the artists eat themselves? Yeah, or? kind of. Like I don't know if there's any like. Well, there's I mean, certain pockets, but I feel like if everybody was trying to work together, and bump out stuff creative, creatively, um, you would get like a, a more dominant New York faction of artists. Even though you got Cardi B, you got huge, yeah, you got gigantic artists from out here. But like, I think that sometimes like when you're in the South, if the artists have a problem with each other. There's a seventy five percent chance they can run into each other. Ah. Uh, so who the artists that do have problems with each other have probably ran into each other. And they probably fought already, and they probably have scared squared the beef. You know. Yeah, they they have. Like to. in New York, you could literally be over here. Like, when are you really gonna run into Cameron? Yeah. If you're yeah. really trying to look for him, like from, Gucci and Jeezy, Queen? they almost killed each other. Like people don't understand. It's like Gucci killed killed his artists. Like they yeah. put a ten thousand dollar hit on him. Like these artists will run into each other. Yeah. So like in New York, like when I guess people were like beefing, it's like, well, I remember seeing that like those beef DVDs. Yeah. yeah. You see fifty jumping into the stands. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he jumps into the stands. And then there's another one where it's like Uncle Luke's talking, he goes, Yeah, Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre, we had to hem them up. We yeah. hemmed them boys up when they came <laughs> yeah. down south. Yeah. He said we hemmed them boys up. So, I love hearing about shit like that though. Like it sucks because I wish like, yeah, it could be all peaceful and shit, but it's like just hearing like how Pac came to New York and he tried to press Nas, and when Nas was there with like super goons, you ever heard the, the Snoop Dogg story? And he's like, "Yo, man, I don't know if he noticed." <laughs> but like, like everybody's there, like locked and loaded, like looking at him. Pac just didn't give a fuck. Sometimes it's like when you go to people's name. I felt like when I was such a big Fifty fan, I had to realize, like, dude, you're from the South, man. You can't like alienate. And I was like, oh, I do love Rick Ross. I do love. Yeah. Sometimes, like, when you grow up, you realize that these artists do not give an f about me. I just like their music. Yeah. And I was like, let me put these G Unit shirts away. I still got them, <laughs> but I was like, I am not a part of G. I'm not a part yeah. of it. Everything else, and then you start enjoying music because it's like Southern music just makes me feel good. Yeah. You know, like some. And I think that's for any genre too. Yeah. Like even a, a sad genre. The motherfucker's playing a, a, a guitar. Kid Cudi. Yeah, like, or Cudi too, but like, in every style of music, for some reason, it does hit like a different, like, I like Southern rock. Like, okay. Like, straight, like, it's kind of like grimy to me. It's it, more grittier? Yeah, and it's like, it's, but it's like fun too, and groovy. <laughs> like, you, it's a little different from other ideas. Their head, their, their, it's like, it's, I like it because, like, everyone used to, I think I was reading this thing, how they said, like, hip hop was like, didn't want to premiere at the Grammys when, like, Will Smith first promo was protesting the Grammys and stuff. Yeah. And, like, how how hip-hop's such a young genre. But, like, hip-hop is the only genre of music where you can hear somebody's accent and you can hear where they're from. Oh, yeah, for sure. No other genre can you hear where these people are from. Yeah. No, that's true. Like, if when everyone's singing and stuff. Keith yeah. Urban is from Australia, and he sounds like he's from Tennessee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's from Australia? Yeah. Isn't he <laughs> Australian? Whatever. What's the Toby <laughs> Maguire? Not Toby. What's the guy from <laughs> The Voice? Mag Toby Keith? Uh, Toby. It, One of those know. dudes is Australian. He's a big country singer. Adele sounds like she's from it's Tennessee. like 21 Savage, though, right? Right. British. <laughs> yeah, he's a British guy. Well, he was right. Yeah, but there's some British rappers that sound like British rappers. There's yeah. French rappers that sound like French rappers. But a kid in Taiwan singing will sound just like Whitney Houston. Yeah. Which and they mimic the the sound that they're trying yeah. to achieve. 
But with hip hop, it's like more thorough to be like, where you're from. So like when Iggy Azalea came out, like you don't sound like that. Nah. You are not from Atlanta, Georgia. How the freak do you really sound? Yeah. I liked need... Iggy when she first dropped, though. Yeah, until you realize, oh, you're from Australia. <laughs> I was like, oh, she could spit. Slick Rick like... is from London, too. No. Yeah, he's from England. Slick Rick is from England? Yes. He's I've British. never knew that for real. He's British. He's a British dude. And everyone around him was pretending to rap British. What? His crew weren't even British. They're just dudes from New York. I never knew he was... We can Google that to make sure, but I'm pretty, yeah, Brick Slick Rick is British. He's a British dude. He's like, Slick Rick is a once in a fine in the early third. Yeah, he's British. He didn't fake yo. that accent up. He is really a British rapper. Yo, he's a fucking proper jock. He's, like, <laughs> yo, he's a fucking, he's a fucking beef eater. Like, that's crazy. I never a knew that. Be, a beef eater. Yeah. They have their own genre. I was in London last summer. What, the summer like grime before. shit? Yeah, they're yeah. like, their drill music, they're everything yeah. else. They kind of... They're kind of the sound that cultivated that, and it kind of got made its way over here. But that came from like um, I don't know their names and shit, but it came from like DJs spinning and shit. Okay, from out there, like even like even like kind of like dubstep type shit. Mm -hmm. But it, it kind of blended house in, music. yeah, kind of house music, EDM, electronic shit. Before it was all corny out here, and like <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> like motherfuckers wearing I don't know fucking music like nets and shit. It comes back around. You yeah, know, like if you think about, it, everyone has probably resampled Three Six Mafia hits. Oh yeah, like people I like that Three Six Mafia was trying to do like something like occultish and almost metal. Yeah, yeah, with the you know like so they, they were doing like horror rap at first. There was that was a, a dude Juicy J. I think it was like a year ago where he apologized and says if anybody did drugs because of me, I apologize. I said, what about me getting all these fights at clubs? You're yeah. not going to apologize, <laughs> apologize yeah. for that? I love that whole 3-6 camp, um, Project Pat and Project shit. Project Pat? Project Pat is my shit, bro. I, it's I, the cheese like pancake. Yeah, yeah. It's Project <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pat. Yo, he was the fucking... I saw him, um, saw him a few years back, maybe like six years ago, finally. And it was cool. You saw him live? Yeah, I saw him live. Oh, how was that? Where'd you see him at? Uh, at uh, Irving Plaza on 14th Street. Ooh. It was a cool show. It was uh, him and Juicy J. Hey, she's so, a freak. <laughs> yeah. So it was cool to finally see like like Chicken Head and like uh, $2 bills. And, I feel like, like Gangster Boo should have been born in the 90s. You think so? She's like what Cardi B is. Like Cardi, like what Cardi B is, like how she sounds, she sounds like early Gangsta Boo. Yeah. Because oh, when Cardi raps, she sounds like a Southern girl. Like her first album, I thought I was listening to some like early 3 6, everything else. Yeah, I think that's that sound, though. It took over the, all of hip hop, right? It's the sound, but it's like the New York personality. Yeah, you know, she's exactly. She's a chick from the Bronx. Yeah, and doing that. French sound. Montana's a dude from the Bronx, but they have that Southern's where he's rocking and stuff like that, slowing yeah. it down. The, huh? the last like what couple artists to me that sounded like New York hip hop artists is like maybe like Dave East, oh. um, Joey Badass had that sound, Action Bronson a little bit too, yeah. Which that, that kind of like they, they lean more towards boom bat type shit. And, like sometimes I guess when I was listening to this, this artist made a good point to me. He goes, "It's about what they grew up on." Yeah. You know, like artists in the '90s probably only grew up on like New York, like whatever Jewels, and then were listened to is yeah. what they grew up on. But a lot of these artists are probably heavily influenced by Fifty Cent, heavily influenced by Ti. Yeah. G, you know, Gucci, like Fetty Wap. Yeah. That he reminds me sense. a lot of Gucci, a little He's bit. From Jersey too. From right? Jersey, yeah. 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 But when you talking about the trap, I'm like, they're trapping in Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's wild in Patterson, it's a but I right. <laughs> Yo, I was like, I know it's wild in Patterson, caucus, yeah. but it's like you're taking that. You know, he probably grew up on early Gucci Man and stuff yeah. like that, and it's like it's not so a problem see, now. It's just like music's music. Yeah, you can't you you can't really blame anybody for doing it. You know, I guess sounds good. If it sounds good, you gotta let it happen, man. 